Hey, my good friends, Sam Haymart with Test Driven TV. Ford opened the order books for the all new 2022 Maverick a little bit earlier this summer and their order books are filling up, but we're all still waiting for our trucks. I include myself because I myself ordered one. And so I've been watching the forums, I've been looking at all the websites out there, trying to get as much news as I can and learn a little bit more about the truck as we go along. And of course, my job sort of fits into that category a little bit. But the thing is, I have found that a lot of you have a lot of questions, some very common ones that, well, quite honestly, haven't been adequately answered by Ford and there haven't been a lot of clear answers on. So I have curated the top 10 frequently asked questions on the all new Maverick and well, I'm going to do my best to answer them. All right, my friends, let's get right to it. The very first and number one question on the list is, what about that hybrid system? Is it reliable? Is it solid? And here's the thing. I think Ford's going to find out when they do their after the cell research, um, they're going to find out that a lot of you out there, this is going to be the very first hybrid you've ever owned, or sometimes the first Ford hybrid you've ever owned. The fact of the matter is, is because they made hybrid standard on the Maverick, there's a lot of people out there that just want a compact pickup that are going to go, okay, all right, I might try this hybrid thing. And so they're going to find a lot of first time hybrid owners in the buyer matrix of this thing. So let me do my best to answer this question for you. So because the hybrid is standard on the Maverick, Many of you out there are not only unexperienced in driving and owning a hybrid, but have a lot of concerns about Ford's hybrid drivetrain. How it will drive, how reliable is it, and will it really get 40 miles to the gallon? The reality is that Ford has been building hybrid cars and SUVs for well over a decade. The engine and hybrid ECVT in the Maverick is the latest generation of powertrain that powers the Ford Escape Hybrid and a variant of those that powered several other Ford and Lincoln models over the years. Its 2.5-liter gasoline engine, built in Chihuahua, Mexico, is long proven. Its in-house designed and built ECVT hybrid transmission, assembled in Van Dyke, Michigan, is also well proven. The only thing new in the Maverick is the latest generation electric motor designed and built by Ford instead of outsourced from a supplier, which, by the way, has more power and is more efficient. The bottom line is that Ford has been doing this for a while. If you want to get the idea of what it's like to drive, take a test drive in the new Ford Escape Hybrid. It will be nearly identical. The next question I see a lot of is, why doesn't Ford offer all-wheel drive with a hybrid? And this answer sort of ties off the last question. Because the Maverick uses a modified version with a new electric motor, engineering and prove-out for an all-wheel drive version is still ongoing. Because of that, such an option was not available for the 2022 model year production. This is not to say that all-wheel drive for a Maverick hybrid is promised and a sure thing, but will more than likely be something we see in the coming year or two down the line. The next question, why isn't there a plug-in hybrid Maverick? And that's valid because the Escape Hybrid is available in a plug-in version too. It is possible. The gasoline engine and the ECVT powertrain is mechanically identical to a non-plug-in hybrid, so nothing needs to change here and there to offer a plug-in. The major difference is the addition of battery capacity, a different control system, and some software changes. These are things that are in Ford's parts bin, and reports I've read tell that the floorboard of the Maverick Hybrid is already designed to allow for an additional battery capacity to be mounted without any structural changes. I think like the all-wheel drive Maverick option, this is something we will see in the next year or so if the market demands it. The next question is, can the Maverick be flat-toed? A lot of you really want to know the answer to that question. And the answer is simply this, yes and no. The Maverick Hybrid can be flat-toed, but the 2.0 EcoBoost models cannot. According to the Maverick Towing Guide that you can find online with a simple search, you can safely flat-toe the hybrid model by following a few procedures. The 2.0-liter EcoBoost model in front-wheel drive or all-wheel drive simply cannot be flat-toed. Next question, why are there so few options available on the Maverick for more upscale things like high-end audio systems or leather interiors? Maybe even a King Ranch version? In short, because Ford wanted the Maverick to be cheap. If too many standard features, too many options and extras were included in the Maverick, it would cut into the place of the showroom that the Ranger takes up. In essence, if you're going to spend $30,000, $35,000 or $40,000, Ford would rather you buy a Ranger. This is why we don't see high-end touchscreen infotainment systems, leather interiors, and all the like. For now, at least, Maverick is meant to stay in its lane as the affordable product. Simple as that. 
And on the tail end of that question, I see a lot of people asking, can I upgrade that tiny little screen to a bigger one later? And I get it. Everyone looks at that big rectangular slot and sees a little square screen in it with a little space next to it, and they go, why, why not the bigger screen? I get it. I totally get it. Fact of the matter is, is upgrading this later to a SYNC 3, SYNC 4, or a larger screen, whether it be from the factory or aftermarket, the simple answer is just simply no. The aftermarket really just doesn't offer anything in the way of custom fit systems that would replace the stock for touchscreen in a way that's seamless and OEM in its look and function. Furthermore, these systems are not always interchangeable, meaning that if such a system came available in 2023 or 2024, it would be unlikely that you could have it installed in your 2022 Maverick without upgrading a lot of wiring and back-end hardware. Next question, what colors really come with each trim grade of the Maverick? And there's a lot of confusion here because uh, earlier on, the wet Ford website wasn't entirely clear on how these colors all hatch out. There's been a lot of discussion out there about the interior colors with the Maverick. This is in part because while there's lots of photos of the XLT and the Lariat interiors out there, little is shown for the XL. Furthermore, the Ford website early on was ambiguous in its descriptions and photos of the XL interior, not being clear about what the colors really include. So let me clear this up. You had better like blue because the background color in all three trim grades is navy pier. The XL, the XLT, and the Lariat will all have navy pier plastics in the dash, the console, door panels, and surrounding trims. Only the colors of the dash trim inserts, door panel inserts, seating fabric, only those things change from trim grade to trim grade. The XL, for instance, is listed as black onyx in medium dark slate. This is the description for the seating cloth. The surrounding environment is navy pier, as shown on the material palette, as well as now shown in the updated photos and the 360 view on the Ford website. The XLT trim has upgraded seating with navy pier and medium dark slate cloth, but adds orange accent pieces throughout and a light stone finish accent plastic in the doors and on the dash. Again, navy pier surrounds all. Lariat trim is listed as desert brown for its vinyl seats, but also includes navy pier throughout. Here, the plastic pieces are a little bit more upscale looking with bronze colored accents. Note that while it looks like leather, this is Active X, which is Ford's name for vinyl. The next question I saw a lot of earlier on, and not so much lately, but is there going to be a single cab or a super cab Maverick with a longer bed? And the short answer is no, not really that likely. The fact is that crew cabs sell way more than a single or super cab. Even where they're offered, their sales numbers are minimal. So when launching a new product with low costs in mind, it makes sense to offer it only one way, the way that sells. The second reason is because of Maverick's unibody construction and design. When you have a unibody constructed truck, great structural challenges have to be met to keep it from bending in half, for lack of a better way of putting it. If you look at the other unibody trucks, the previous generation Honda Ridgeline and even the new Hyundai Santa Cruz, you'll notice the flying buttress design. That being the sloped C-pillar designed to create a bracing effect against heavy loads and body twist with a cargo box. With the current Ridgeline and the new Maverick, there is no flying buttress. Instead, they've hung the rear quarter panels on as a separate piece so that the rear cargo box structure can move and twist without wrinkling up your sheet metal. Offering a super cab or a single cab variation of the Maverick with a longer bed would require a complete structural redesign and a completely different body structure to be able to handle heavier loads assumed with a longer bed. With its current design format, it's unlikely that really works structurally without adding significant weight and significant cost with extra bracing. Again, for the amount of vehicles they'd actually sell, it's a proposition that just doesn't pencil. There you go. So the next question, a little bit more fun. Can the Maverick be raised or lowered? Can you put a lift kit on it? Can you lower it? And the answer is yes, in time. Count on aftermarket manufacturers of springs and suspension kits to be on this thing quick. The Maverick is a vehicle that I suspect will be popular with the mod crowd, both for those wanting lowered custom sport truck looks, as well as a more rugged off-road theme. I would look to companies who already build a lift kit for the Ford Bronco Sport and keep an eye on them. It would be easy for them to offer a variation for the Maverick, at least for all-wheel drive models. Whether a lift kit for front-wheel drive models takes hold in the market, that's a wild card. Lowering springs should be a given as well for both front-wheel drive and all-wheel drive. Look to establish manufacturers like Eibach, H&R Springs, and maybe even Ford Performance in the coming year to see what pops up. And that gets us to the world of aftermarket accessories. What's going to be available and when? 
Well, I've got the answer for you. I see lots of dreaming and wishing going on, lots of questions about what kind of aftermarket accessories will be available for the new Maverick. In short, count on virtually everything that's available for trucks and SUVs right now to be available for the Maverick in pretty short order. These companies are smart, they know where the money's at. What I'd suggest is look at the companies that are already offering items you want to see for vehicles like the Ford Ranger or the Ford Bronco Sport. These are likely the brands you will first see the items your eyes on coming out first. Most importantly, I'll be going to the SEMA show in early November to see the first accessorized Ford Maverick pickups on display. The annual industry show is where all the aftermarket manufacturers come together to show off their latest and greatest. I anticipate many new things for the Maverick and I will be showing them all to you. All right, following up on that last bit there about the aftermarket parts, I'm all about aftermarket stuff. I'm all about the mods. And the truck that I have coming myself, it's an Area 51 XL, a base model. I intend to accessorize the thing quite well. And so at the SEMA show, I'll be talking to a lot of these manufacturers and seeing what we can get to put together on that truck so I can talk about those mods and bring that information to you, tell you how this stuff actually works. That's what it's about for me. So uh, there you have it for the top 10 frequently asked questions on the 2022 Ford Maverick. Until the trucks actually get here on the ground, all we can do is talk about it. Um, if you have any questions of your own that I did not touch on, or maybe I didn't quite specifically answer the question you had, uh, put that in the comments down below and I'll do my best to get to it. Until we actually have a truck to look at and talk about that way, click right here, see our Ford Maverick playlist, or better yet, subscribe to our YouTube channel right there, and I'll keep you informed of everything we do.